Hi, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So today is the final day of the build of the 148 scale Blackburn Buccaneer from Airfix. Uh, today it's all about doing some panel lines and some detailing, some weathering and then assembling all the bits we've got left. Now, if you like the video, please do remember to give it the imperial thumbs up by clicking the like button down there. If you've followed the build and you'd like to give some more concrete support, you can do it through Super Thanks or through any of my partner programs listed in the information box below. Remember, this kit was purchased thanks to some very generous donations from several people over recent times. Thank you all so very, very much. So let's get on then with building this Buccaneer. Right, so what I'm using here is this long edging brush. See, it's got really, let's see if I can show you, yeah, it's got quite long, thin brush. And I use that just to run that with some wash along the panel line. Now sometimes this wash won't really take terribly well across panel lines. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on um, how good the the decal is set into the um, into the line. But that that's done pretty well there. The first thing we put in is this small plate at the back like so and then the operating rams go in now they go in at an angle 45 degree angle like this and that lines up with the um, mountings on the actual air brakes okay so about 45 degrees like that and then the air brakes can go on now they slide over all of this and slot into place there and there. Like that. Simple as. I'm going to put the arrestor hook in as well. I'll just give that a touch up a bit later on. Then there's the tail bump. I'm going to have that open because the plane is landed and on the deck and all that. So I think it probably would have been open. There we go. One tail bumper. And right back here as well, there's an aerial that sits in right here. Another thing I'm going to put on now is, are these inlet lips for the engines. I've pre-painted them in silver. And they just sit right on the front end of the inlets like so. Right, the nose undercarriage now so i am first of all i'm going to put in the actuator arm um, i'm just going to leave it sitting up a little sort of back a little bit first um, because the main leg of the nose gear is going to go in next and that fits into sort of uh, slots here and then can see the actuator sits into the leg like that okay I'm gonna just leave that to set like that I'm not putting the wheels on just yet I'll do those in a while just wanted to get these actuator arms sorted first sorry there we go see, see just just here 
this pushes into the leg this bit here pushes into the leg just so it looks like there's a pin essentially the in the real thing there's a, a hinge and a pin goes across here so that's what you want it to sit in there so it looks like that pins in place that's all fine that's all pressed into place down there everything's grand we can leave that alone to set now the main gear here it is the uh the gear the f this is the front here and the front points inwards that's how you dis decide which bit goes where now there's a little tab here there's a hole in there that goes in there and then this piece here rests on a ledge down there okay that's all that's got to happen because this is a very chunky piece of undercarriage it has to be said um let's just slot this in when Blackburns were designing this I think they knew this plane is going to be hitting the deck and it's going to be hitting it hard you know this is um, probably the heaviest jet ever to operate from fleet air arm aircraft carriers I think I think it's heavier than a, a fully laden Phantom so they needed some pretty heavy juicy gear and by god did they ever give it heavy juicy gear this this stuff is like a tree trunk it's amazing so anyway that goes in there same on the other side leave them to set nice and properly hot something else we must not forget to put in are the elevator elevator aileron actuators now the very nice thing is if you've decided to have the ailerons deployed as they would be um, acting as accessory flaps on outboard flaps essentially then this part here there's another equivalent part with a shorter actuator arm here so when this is folded up it fits in place properly isn't that thoughtful anyway i'm using the ones for the flaps ailerons stowed in their regular place now if we go back and refer to page four of the instructions where they discuss the weapons layout for scheme a the one we're doing we will see that under the starboard wing here is a tv martel and under the port wing over there is the radar martel okay so as these are folded wing sections we can put the pylons on first let them set then put the weapons on as well so tv on this side the starboard wing and radar on the port wing so here we have starboard wing and the launch rail for a tv guided martel that's in, that's in very nicely then under the port wing it's the launch rail for the radar martel and as we're very close to the end of the build i'm going to risk putting on the piso tube normally i wouldn't do this because i would break it but we're so close to the end i'm hoping fingers crossed i don't mess this one up and we can put the inboard pylons on as well so on the port side yes the port side is a tv guided martel on its launch rail And on the port side is the pylon for the uh, TV missile data pod. I'm also going to put on the gear doors now. The main gear doors, these hooks fit into slots that we've created in there 
earlier on. There we go. And of course the nose gear door goes in as well. Again, it's just a couple of little tabs, a couple of little slots. They go in very, very nicely. As so much of this kit has, let's be honest, it so much of this has gone incredibly well. I'm also going to go around and put in some of the more robust, let's say, aerials and ones that are protected by other things like this undercarriage leg. Um, some of the more delicate ones I'll leave till the very, very end. When the pylons have set, we can attach the missiles. Told you the nose would look cool. While the missiles are setting, I'll put some decals onto the FOD covers. Time to put some of these last few aerials into the aircraft as well. There's this also this um, blast shield, I guess it is, for the navigator that has to sit in. And that sits in very straightforwardly. There's two tiny little lugs on the inside of the canopy. Uh, canopy area here <clears throat> and that sits in nicely right so I'm going to put in a few oil stains I used to have some Vallejo oil stain wash or something like that but I've lost it it got gum ducks so I don't use it that often uh, so I threw it away so what I've got here is some burnt sienna oil paint just really small amount and some uh, white spirit, I guess, some thinners. And um, we're just gonna use this as a very gentle, very careful wash. Anything mechanical, like these wheels, let's zoom in a bit so we can see better. Anything mechanical like these wheels, just put a bit of it in there. Now, anything mechanical is going to get oil on it. And oil is going to attract a bit of dust and muck and grime. It doesn't mean the thing's oily per se. It doesn't mean that the hubs are leaking or whatever. It just looks quite nice, I think. Just adds a little bit, a little splash of colour to something that is, frankly, very, very, very grey. So I apply these on the wheels, on bits of undercarriage, um, on the wing fold mechanisms, everywhere where there's going to be oil used a lot, the engine, even bits and pieces of the engine. And it just sort of brightens up the colour a bit. It brightens up the kit a little bit. Um, see if I can show you on this undercarriage leg. It's still on the undercarriage leg here. Let's get my um, yeah, still on this undercarriage leg, for example. So all these joints that are going to be oiled to keep them lubricated, and maybe even the top of the compression there, like the, the oleo just dabs little dabs of spots of little bright bits of color really it just brings it to life a little bit do you know what i mean that's that's what i think anyway and now i'm going to put the um fod cover over the front of the air intake like that just make sure it um all fits on quite nicely zoom out a little bit there we go And okay, so the next thing that's going in are the wheels. Now, they do have flat spots, so what FX are suggesting is you put them in um, without glue first and let them sit where they should, and then maybe you can just tap a bit of glue in. Now, important thing is that these, these bits here, the ones that look like they've got brake assemblies, that's the empty one, if you like. That's one of the brake assembly. Brake assembly goes on the outside, okay? Now 
So a quick double check there. Yes, it definitely does. So the brake assembly bit, this bit goes on the outside. This small plane hub goes in the inside of the main wheels, okay? So we'll just very, very carefully slot them into place and they'll click into place when they're sitting on the hubs properly. There you go. Right, so now you can see, there we go, they'll move. They're going to be roughly in the flat spot like that, but we'll put them there, put them onto something flat and then just dab a bit of um, ultra thin into the axles to make them absolutely set, yeah? But we'll put together the ladder, no, or both of the ladders actually, we'll start with this one though. The frame kind of sits into the side that, like that. Like that, and then when it's ready, that can go onto the side of the aircraft. That's important, I hope you can see here. It's important that the folding bits here, these struts here, sit on the outside of the ladder, otherwise they won't line up properly. Okay, so they sit on the outside of the ladder like that. All right, let's try and put these ladders in. So they, the bottom connection slots into those holes we drilled right near the beginning, like that, and then the top just sort of sits over into place like that. Wow, that went in. Fantastic. We'll try the other one. Fingers crossed. Maybe just pick the holes first and then push in. There we go. Actually, not too bad. Not too bad at all. We'll top up the red here and there, bits and pieces, and that will be that. Ladders on. Now here on the port side, of course, we have the engine bay that's open, so we just need the engine bay cover to go into place. Let's give it a bit of gentle persuasion, make sure it's all where it should be. The other thing that needs to go on, of course, is the canopy, which sits about there. The wings slot down into place as well. These are quite a tight fit. The refueling probe needs to go on and that is the last bit of the kit. Just go around and Touch up a few bits of paintwork here and there. And we're done. So there we go. I haven't enjoyed building a kit as much as this for quite a long time, I have to say. The vast majority of pieces all, almost snap together. Um, with I've used, what, two bits of putty in the whole build for some minor seam filling. The rest of it, really just needed to be fit together, sanded down and job done. Um, there really isn't much to criticize on this kit, I have to say. It's really, really well designed. Um, it would be lovely if it had an opening rhodome, um, just like the real uh, uh, Buccaneers did, because that was a very, very important part of the Buccaneer design. It's what allowed it to fit onto British aircraft carriers, let's be honest. I do understand the reasons why, um, I understand that the part count was going quite high 
and something had to give. And also, if you put weight in the nose, there's the issue of whether you can get the nose cone to hinge back and sit properly without building a hinge so big that if you don't want the radome open, it's too bulgy. I understand all of that. It just would have been a nice option, I guess. Uh, choice of schemes is fantastic. I personally wouldn't have done two 809 squadrons. I'd have done the late 809 with the Martels, obviously, but maybe an 800 squadron because, you know, they did operate them up until 1972 on HMS Eagle. Maybe if they do an earlier version, S2A version, then we can have um, some of the aircraft from Eagle that took part in the Torrey Canyon raid, for example, with the big red triangle markings on the back as well. They will look lovely. Have a look at the 172nd kit. It's got that in it. Other than that, uh, there's a bit of confusion around some of the decals and the weapons options. Um, you know, decals for four Martels where it could really only carry three in these configurations, unless you have four radar Martels which aren't supplied. Um, some of the decals just don't seem to fit all that well. Maybe I've done something wrong, but maybe they probably won't actually... They don't, they don't match up exactly with the decal sheet and the decal instructions on the glossy fold-out decal instructions don't match up frankly but it's not insurmountable given that you have four sets of everything and you only ever need three sets of anything um i think this kit will do extremely well it's it's beautifully made i'm sure it's going to get lots of rave reviews the detailing is lovely the thought processes are brilliant the ability to put bombs in the bomb bay is a big step up from the 172 kit. When the RAF versions come out, I'm sure they will do really, really well, especially if you would go to a late sort of Gulf War era one with the paveways and the uh, designated pods and stuff like that and the desert camouflage. Those, are, judging by the feedback I've had, those will do really, really well if they get that far. All in all, an absolute delight to make, I will say, and worth every penny. So that's it for the Buccaneer. Now remember, if you've enjoyed the programme, and I hope you have, please remember to give it the Imperial thumbs up by clicking the like button below. And if you haven't done so already, and I don't know why you haven't if you're seeing this, but if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the channel. That way you can catch up with new builds as they come along and of course explore my back catalogue link to the subscribing is just that little logo down there in the bottom right corner and anyway thank you so much for watching all these videos if you have so far um, I hope to see you again next time I'll see you then thanks very very much for watching goodbye